As this afternoon's earthquake struck Mexico, another hurricane, Maria, was blasting the northern Caribbean. It is a Category 5, the strongest on the scale. And in its wake, there is major destruction and at least one death. Howling winds of 160 miles an hour and driving rain battered the tiny targets of Guadalupe and Dominica during the night. Before being rescued, Dominica's Prime Minister, Roosevelt Skerritt, posted live updates from his home, describing the merciless winds and saying, we pray for its end. Then, minutes later, my roof is gone. I am at the complete mercy of the hurricane. House is flooding. Today, all communications were cut with Dominica, and on Guadalupe, people waded through floodwaters several feet deep, with cars and buildings partly submerged. As night came on, the storm roared toward the U.S. Virgin Islands. Just days after Hurricane Irma's destruction forced more than 2,000 people to evacuate to Puerto Rico. Maria is on track to pass directly over St. Croix in the Virgin Islands overnight and then slam into Puerto Rico by early tomorrow morning. Puerto Rico avoided much of Irma's wrath, but still suffered an estimated $1 billion in damage. Now much worse may lie in store. Weary residents on Puerto Rico had just started to clear debris and unboard homes after Irma. Puerto Rico is not prepared for this. We're going to have a bad time of it. We ask Almighty God that we get through this without serious damage. Meanwhile, Hurricane Jose rolled up the Atlantic today, spinning off rip currents and big waves along the U.S. East Coast. It is not expected to come ashore. Hurricane Irma devastated the U.S. Virgin Islands, and now they sit directly in Maria's path. Kenneth Mapp is governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands. We spoke by phone a short time ago. Governor Kenneth Mapp, thank you very much for talking with us. Coming so soon after Hurricane Irma, how are you preparing? How, how are you trying to make sure people are safe? We tend to really anticipate that they're going to have uh, some roofs breached, maybe some windows blown out. You're going to get wet. You're going to lose your personal belongings. But what we want you to be safe, and we just went through that 12 days ago on the island of St. Thomas and St. John with a Cat 5 called Hurricane Irma. We were pleased that notwithstanding the devastation, um, we did not see uh, any number, any marks, a number of folks with trauma, broken bones, cuts and gashes, and our loss of life uh, still remains at four. And so on St. Croix, uh, we're literally doing the same thing all over again, except for the southern part of the U.S. Virgin Islands. At this hour, Governor Mapp, what is your main worry? Uh, protection of, of folks, uh, protection of life. Folks are, are off the street. Uh, we've got the shelters open. Folks are in the shelter. And so my biggest priority at this moment and for the next eight hours is the, the protection of their lives and their safety. Well, Governor, we wish you and all the people of the, the Virgin Islands, uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, the very best uh, as you try to withstand this storm in the coming hours. Best of luck, and uh, we'll talk to you on the other side. Thank you, Judy. Take care. Thank you. Puerto Rico dodged the worst of Irma, but now faces a direct hit from Maria. Ricardo Rosella is Puerto Rico's governor. Governor Rosello, thank you very much for talking with us. A dire warning from your public safety commissioner telling people if they live in wooden or flimsy houses to get out or they're going to die. Uh, this is the, the strongest storm that Puerto Rico will face in over a century. Uh, so... Uh, the, the danger is real, and uh, uh, the comments made by, by our officials were uh, directed at making people aware that uh, this is not you know, your average storm. Uh, this is going to have grave impact on infrastructure. It's going to provoke a lot of, uh, a lot of flooding, uh, sustained winds of 160 miles an hour. So we wanted to make sure people were really aware and cognizant of the need to move to one of our 500 shelters. Uh, or other family shelters, uh, but to be safe. And uh, once the storm passes, we can start the rebuilding process. In Puerto Rico. Are people uh, following those directions? Do you, are you feeling confident about how prepared uh, you are? There is typically sort of a, a late exponential push uh, of people 
coming into the uh, the shelters. Right now, I'm happy to start seeing uh, those flow in. You know, we have a dashboard that uh, starts tabulating all of the people that are that are going in. Uh, in the onset, we were a little bit nervous, um, as with uh, Hurricane Irma, but but surely uh, and, and quickly right now, people are flocking in, and, and it's for the best, really. Uh, we, we haven't faced a storm uh, of the ferocity that this storm uh, possesses, and it's better to be safe uh, than, than sorry and, and uh, uh, either lose a loved one or, or lose one's life in this process. We know that Puerto Rico has been under some financial strain in recent years. Is that in any way affecting your ability to be ready for this? No, not at all. We, we know what priorities are, and, and our priority right now is to make sure that we save people's lives. Governor Ricardo uh, uh, Rossello, thank you very much, and we wish you the very best uh, in the hours to come. Thank you. Thank you, Judy.